Welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be working on our EasyGo golf cart today. It's an EasyGo ST model and I'm going to be doing the rear brakes on this golf cart today. So stick around. So here's our EasyGo golf cart. It's an EasyGo ST model. I'm not sure what year this is. We bought this little golf cart used and uh, I'm really not sure what year it is, but the brakes have gotten where they, uh, it'll still stop, but it's just really slow. So I'm not sure if it needs new brake pads on it or if it just needs the brakes adjusting or what the issue is. But uh, we're going to take a look at it today. Uh, I do have new brake pads if it needs it or if it just needs adjusting, we'll just uh, check it out and adjust the brake pads if that's all it needs and see if we can get it to stop a little bit better. So let's get going. The first thing I want to do is get it up on some jack stands so we can take the rear tires off. So let's do that. Let's start by taking the tires off. Okay, tire number one. And now that we have the tire off, we can see the hub and this is the brake rotor here. So we'll need to take this off to get to the brake shoes. So the next step is to take off this um, dust cap here that covers the bolt that holds the hub on. So I'm just going to, got a little lip here, so I'm just going to tap on it and see if I can get it to come off. See it moving? And that uh, reveals our castle nut and our carter key and uh, our carter pin. And we can pull that out and take this castle nut off and then the uh, brake hub will come off. So let's see if we can get this carter pin out. Now I did turn on my fan because it's a little warm in the garage today. So you may hear some hum in the background. If you're wondering what that is, it's my fan to try to get a little air moving in here. Now, let's see if we can get this out. Okay. There we go. Okay, get that bad boy out. Now we want to get this castle nut off here. So let's see if we can get this castle nut off. And if you're wondering why it's called a castle nut, it's because it has these little grooves in it. 
kind of look like the ramparts or the top of a castle. And those are meant to be able to uh, set your nut in a certain spot and then put a carter pin through it to lock it in place. So let's see what we get. Watch your ears here. Oh, okay. That wasn't bad at all. Okay, and then we've got a washer and this little dust cover here. And let's see how easy the hub is gonna come off now. Well, first of all, <laughs> I set the brake, the park brake, so I could spin this castle nut off. So the brakes are locked into the hub. So the next thing I have to do is release the park brake and then that would allow the hub to come off. Okay, park brake is off. Let's see how that does now. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. Slid right off. So let's take a look at those pads. Let me put my spectacles on. You know, they don't look really, really, really bad, but they're a little, they're a little worn. And we have the new pad, so I'll go ahead, clean all of this up with some brake clean, and uh, replace these pads. We're also going to do a uh, replace the shocks on this cart too. So uh, if uh, you're interested in how to do that, stay tuned, and we'll do it in the next video. So next, I want to take the old brake pads out. And what holds these in is there is two springs that hold the brake pads together. There's one here and one here. And then there's a little piston or lever at the bottom that spreads the brake pads out when you uh, press the brakes. Uh, and that's how these work. So uh, to get those out, I need to take these two retaining clips out. And then we'll pull those off. So to get these retaining clips out, you just press in on this little clip and then you turn it. So let me see if I can do that with these pliers here. Uh, can I do it with my finger? There we go. I was able to do it with my hand. And again, here's the, uh, the rod that came out of the back. And the way those work is they have a little key in them there and when you turn this it locks locks in so you press in turn it uh, I guess 90 degrees and then it comes out Let's see if I can get this one sometimes you have to hold the center because when you press back, it wants to uh, push that pin back also. Or if you can get your hand behind like this and hold the pin. You could do it that way too. There may be some fancy smancy tool that is meant to do this, but uh, I don't have that fancy smancy tool. And I do see that that pin is pushing back as I push the uh, the uh, retaining spring in. So I'm going to try to hold it here on the side with a pair of pliers while I push that in. There we go. That worked. Oh, and there comes the, the shoes off. And you can see now that those have popped out of there. Let me get those out. They are a little worn. If we look at the edge, yeah, you can see that. Let me see if I can get that in the camera. Okay, so here are the pads. You can see that lip right here. So you can see how much they're worn. So yeah, they could use some replacing. I'll get out a new, a new pad and uh, show you the uh, the difference in them here are the new pads
Okay, so let's compare the two. Here's the new one, and here's the old one. So you can see it's not it's not down to the metal by any means, but it's worn, and maybe these have gotten glazed a little bit. Here you see how shiny that is. Sometimes they get hot and get glazed and they don't stop very well. So we'll replace them. The next thing I want to do is clean this up a little bit. Um, I put a pan under here to catch uh, anything that's going to fall off and I have some brake clean and you just you can use the flavor of your choice and i did put some gloves on for this activity because this this brake clean can be kind of tough on your hands and uh, a lot of times you also want to wear some uh, like a resp not a respirator per se but some uh, breathing protection just so any dust that gets kicked up off of this thing uh, won't go into your lungs these I don't believe, I don't think they really use asbestos that much anymore in the brake pads, but still it's not good to breathe this stuff in. I'm gonna use a little brush here to kind of assist in the cleaning some. I'm being careful not to knock this stuff out here. Well, that one came out, but uh, these. and these are your adjusters, and we we will adjust these uh, once we put the brakes back in. I want to clean those up a bit, make sure they move well. Oop, I believe I've used that one, that can up. That just had a little little in it. I had already used that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Everything nice and clean. So everything works nicely slides nicely okay I'm gonna pull these out and don't lose your little spacers here washers I'll set those down and I'm gonna clean this up a bit Whoa, see what I'm talking about? This stuff is eating my gloves up. There. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. So here are the way the springs go back on. Remember, this is your top of your shoe here. You have three different size springs. You have a, a long one with two hooks. You have this kind of medium or short one with two odd looking hooks on the end. And then you have this uh, small one. The way these hook on is the big one goes on the top like that. The small one goes on the bottom like this. And then this one goes like these two hook to the pad but this one hooks to the pad on this end with this uh, small hook here and this hook hooks over to the brake adjuster so this goes in like this and then hooks to the brake adjuster so let's see if we can get the pads back on now I'm 
I'm going to try to put them on without the springs. Now I've put my little uh, retaining pin back in that's going to hold this. I'm going to put my new pad on. Remember, flat side goes to the top. This side goes to the bottom. Flat side goes right under here, and this one sits here. Now I'm holding this pin from the back side with my finger, and I want to line up the groove, press it down, and then just turn 90 degrees, and it locks it in. You just want to make sure that's locked in there. It is. So that's the first one. Now the second one, I can't get my hand behind here. There's no way to, uh, to get it behind. So I'm going to hold that with a pair of pliers while I put the pad on. And then when I put this pad on, I want to make sure that this bottom piece here is in this groove. See the groove on that adjuster there? So you want to make sure it's in the groove and then behind here. And then we can, I'm going to hold this with my pliers so that it's sticking out far enough. Okay. And then I'm going to take my little clip, line up the line there, and see if I can push this on with my thumb. Twist 90 degrees. There we go. Okay. So we got the two pads on. Now let's see if we can get the springs, <coughs> springs on there. So as I said, we have three springs. The big spring goes up top. So let's see if I can get that one on there. Oops, this is going to take a little bit of brute force. I might have to get a pair of channel locks or something that I can really grab a hold of this with. I don't want to pull that off. Yeah, okay. Let me see what I can do with that. So let's see if we can get our springs on. I have a pair of channel locks here. I'm going to clamp on here. Try to make it easier to put these on. And then I'm just going to Try this over with my screwdriver. Let's see if I can do this. Get it in there. There we go. Make sure those stay in there. Good. Okay, this one needs to come out. There we go. I want to make sure they're they're uh, in behind all of the pieces. There we go. So they're flat and not turned out like that. Okay, there we go. Nice and flat. So I brought you down closer so you can see. Now, next we want to put this little spring in. And I'm going to take it behind this one. Maybe this one would have been better to try to get on beforehand, but here we go. And then I'll pull it over, clip it into here. Okay. So now we have our pads on there good. And then we need to uh, put the spring on for the uh, adjuster. And that's this little spring. It goes in behind here like this. And then I'll grab it. Yep. Easier said than done. Trying to stay out of the way of the camera too, which makes it a little more challenging. Here we go. Well, come on now. Yep. 
There we go. Okay. There we go. So, there's our new pads on with everything there. Now, I'm going to clean up the drum here a little bit and then we'll put it back together. I've got my drum in here and I have my Dremel with just a little sanding wheel on it and I'm just going to scuff this up a bit if I can get everything untangled and I'm not trying to take any metal or anything off just trying to scuff it up just a bit so that the new pads will uh, Oh, that looks more better. All right. And like I said, you can take a piece of sandpaper. If you don't have a Dremel. Just like this. And then just go around the inside of it. And scuff it up a bit. And this is just to get the sheen off of it. So that the new brake pads have a clean surface to grab onto. There we go, it looks better. So now I'm just gonna spray this with a little brake clean to get all that dust out of there. There we go. And I'll wipe it out. So you see that looks nice in there now for our new pads. So now we're ready to put our drum back on. Make sure, one final check to make sure everything's on good, in the right locations. A, a bit, that may help, let's see. good on that one How about this one okay so I slid that down a little bit and now it's sticking out here so I need to tap it up just a bit let me get my tapper Let's see if I can tap this one up just a, just a tad see how that looks I'm just feeling with my hand There we go. There you go. So you see, you just got to work with it a little bit. Don't want to force it, but just get it on there. <clears throat> okay, there we go. It's pretty good. And it feels pretty, pretty tight now. You hear it rubbing on the, the uh, wheel. So we'll uh, put our castle nut back on and then we'll adjust the brakes via that adjuster that's in here in this little hole right right there okay let's get our castle nut back on oops about to forget my dust cover plate and my thrust washer there the washer Right. 
and then you just tighten this up you don't want to like make it super tight you just it's just going to hold this on so it's not like it's a whole lot of force on it but let me get my my impact wrench so what i'm going to do is set my impact wrench to the lightest setting and run this up and then i'm going to look for my hole for the cotter pin see where it is it's right there so i could probably go a little bit more It's right there, so it's getting close. Let me give me one more little whacker here. Okay, there we go. Right there. Now the old Carter pin is okay. I have a box of, of new ones. Uh, this one's not too bad. Sometimes they're really mangled and you need to get a new one. But I think this one is okay. Looks pretty good. All right, and then we just slide that through. Take our little pliers. Bend this back. Tuck it in there. Bend this one this way. There we go. All right, and then we put our... All right, maybe that'll give me... Angle at it. Oh, let's see. I think that's pretty good, I think. We'll try it there. See how that works. Alright, we'll just leave it right there for now. Okay, tap this back on. And then all we have left to do is put the tire back on. So I won't bore you with that. But uh, now I'm going to go over and do the other side. And it's basically the same process on the other side so again I won't bore you with that uh, process okay I lied I am going to show you a little bit of this other side this one is really really worn so if you see here there's really no pad at all left on this um, let me look inside the hub the hub still looks okay so it didn't damage the hub but you can see there is no brake pad. That's the, that's the metal backing and there's no shoe material on there at all. So let me pull those off and we'll take a look at them. So I'm gonna pull these off. I know I told you I wouldn't bore you with doing the other side, but I wanna show you how worn these are. Let me do this one that I can hold the back. There we go. I'll take that little thing out. Okay, I'm going to grab the, the back of this so I can hold it while I turn it with my thumb. <clears throat> there we go. Came off. Now, let's see if I can get the springs off. Oh, there we go. Well, so much for the springs. There we go. Either way. All right, so let's take a look at these. And you can see these look pretty bad. So here's the ones I just took off. And uh, they're much worse than the ones on the other side. Or here, you can see, there's really no uh, pad material left on here at all. That's like the metal part there so these are really badly worn as opposed to the new set 
<laughs> you see the difference all the pad here there's no pad on these so they definitely needed replacing um, so this is a better example than the first side so I guess it was wearing on this and you can also see that uh, the adjuster here was all the way out this piece here so it had adjusted itself all the way out trying to compensate for the fact that there was no pad left on the shoes so again we'll clean all this up put the new pads on and we should be ready to go okay here's the other side all complete it's pretty i need so pretty all right now we just gotta clean the hub up put the hub back on adjust it and we'll be ready to ride So there you go. That's uh, changing the rear brake pads on a um, EasyGo ST golf cart. Wasn't too bad. Um, so if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all of our videos and ring that bell notification so that anytime I post a new video, you'll get notified. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time on Thistle Hill Farmstead.